Hi everyone, this is Brawl Racing with an update on this week's F1 testing at the Hungaroring. And yes, oh, um, yeah, who's that guy that everyone's been talking about for the past two months? I forgot his name, I mean, oh, oh yes, it's, it's Mr. Kubiquitous himself, Robert Kubitzer. That's all the F1 press has been talking about today. Robert Kubitzer, yes, what a brilliant performance he put in today. He did a total of at least 140 laps, the equivalent of two race distances, with a best time of a 1 minute 18.5. Only one tenth of a second slower than Julian Palmer's qualifying lap in Q2 last weekend. Well, 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 I've got to say this, but I really think it is now come to the point, it is now the only option that Renault have that they have to replace Jody and Palmer with, with Kubitz. Uh, I mean, yesterday we saw Nicholas Latifi drive, I think he only managed to do a 1 minute 20, let's face it, Latifi's not... The TV prop is probably no well, we can't be better than Palmer, so um, well he's probably never gonna get to Formula One anyway, but Qubit, sir, is a talent that will always shine. No doubt about it. And quite frankly, if I was the CEOs in the Renault's boardroom right now, if I had to pay ten million pounds or even more than that to get rid of Jody and Palmer even though he's already getting paid one million US dollars to drive for Renault this season I would pay that much money seriously Kubica is worth every penny he is going to make a huge difference and I have every confidence if he came back that by the time Formula 1 gets to Singapore he'll be scoring points again because of course you have to remember the next two circuits in at Spa in Belgium and of course Monza in Italy are power tracks. Robert Kubitz, uh, of course, will not score points there, and of course it'll be his first two races back after seven years. But come Singapore, even though his right hand will be absolutely knackered, I'm sure that car he'll be able to drag that car into the points. And yes, I don't think he'll be faster than Hulkenberg, of course. Of course, quite frankly, he'll need to bed in again. Of course, he'll probably be at least about half a second off the pace. But quite frankly, compared to Jody and Palmer, who is at least on average eight tenths of a second slower than Hulkenberg, you, it's really the only option. I mean, he couldn't. Robert Kubica literally couldn't do worse. And that guy only has one functioning hand right now. That, that literally puts into perspective how much R Renault need Kubitzer. And do you know what it is? Kubitzer could quite easily negotiate a very, very, very tidy deal for himself. He could say to them, hey, you seriously need me. You need to pay me at least half, at least one million dollars for just doing the last nine races this season because... The championship points I will get you will mean so much to you. And of course, yes, I haven't forgot. No, I've not forgotten. Um, yes, there was plenty of other young drivers testing today. Uh, Britain's Lando Norris was testing for McLaren Honda. And he did a lap time of 1 minute 17.385. Which was actually faster than any lap time they did during the race weekend at Hungary... Did, did, yeah, so, um, um, of course, Sebastian Vettel begged Kimi Raikkonen to, that he could sp spend at least a couple of hours in the Ferrari this morning. He said at that time of 1 minute 17.1, which no one has come anywhere near close to. Raikkonen went out and, well, quite frankly, he's been doing long run tests, so can't really compare his times to Vettel. And it's not like we need to really have an examination of Kimi's abilities anyway. Pierre Gasly turned out for Red Bull. Bit of one minute 20.3. He was obviously doing long test running. Um, Lucas Ayer from um, the BW Mercedes DTM team came over to test for Force India for a second day. Did a one minute 19.2. 
sort of decent, but not earth shattering. Lance Stroll also turned up for Williams, did some long run testing. Luca Guido, Italy's Luca Guido, also, also tested for Williams. He was okay, but not impressive. Um, Gustav Maria, quite frankly, that bloke's a pay driver, clearly, because he's tested for Sauber. I mean, they need all the money they can get, really. He did a woman at 21.5, not F1 material there either. And of course, um, yes. I haven't forgotten, of course, the F1 Super License uh, regulations. Yes, they only concern the young drivers. But for any of those could think, could, uh, wondering whether doing these uh, mid-season tests will grant any of the kids who did the, at least 300 kilometers worth of testing today will get a Super License just for doing this. The answer is no. But for Robert Kubica, though, he will be granted a super license because he has completed the extra extrication test where he had to get out of the car within six, five or six seconds, which he passed easily. And, of course, he has four years worth of Formula 1 race experience, so the, it doesn't really concern him. Of course, others who tested Santino, Ferrucci, another pay driver... Yeah, I think you're getting a pattern now. A lot of some of these kids who have been coming over to test, they've got money in hand, which is obviously handy for some of these impoverished teams. And of course, um, yesterday, Mr. Sean Galil of Indonesia tested for Toro Rosso. He himself was miles off the pace, so yeah, you, you can get you get the pattern now. A lot of pay drivers coming out, but. Quite frankly, of course, uh, anyone else who wants further details on super license points, you need at least 40 super license points gained from your success in the junior categories, which is um, in Formula 2, you get 40 points for either, well, if you well succeed to finish in the top three, so first, second, and third will get 40 points. Um, oh, and then in European Formula 3, Formula E, the LMP1 class in the World Endurance Championship, and IndyCars, only the champion gets 40 points for a three year period once they win that championship. And then, of course, uh, Formula Red, Formula V8, 3.5 only gets 35 points for winning the series. GP3, just 30. Japanese Super Formula, 25. And then, of course, the other series like World Touring Card, the WRC, DTM and Indy Lights only get 15 points. Uh, the Supercars Championship in Australia, 13. Uh, the FIA Formula 4 Championships, 12 points. National Formula 3 Series, just 10 points, along with Formula Renault 2.0. And then, of course, Karting World Championships, see the category, get 5 points for winning it. So, yeah, I mean, there's actually, I think there's actually quite, um, yeah, so I'm going to look through the list of which kids are, eligible um felix rosenquist who of course spent six years in formula 3 could enter even though he's 25 and probably too old uh, alex lynn could still come he's got 46 points charles leclerc could literally just jump in a car right now because of the fact he's already got 47 louis Delatras who is struggling severely this season in GP2, has already got 49 points. Um, Pierre Gasly has got 69. Ser Sergei Sorokin has got 70. Yeah, and of course, well the, well, the list of drivers who are outside Formula 1 who currently top the Super License points list are... Um, Sebastian Biebi, Mr. Mardos himself, Andre, Andre Lotra, who uh, did a one of appearance of Catering three years ago in Belgium, has 118 points, Biebi has 121, whilst, this year, whilst the new Formula E champion, Lucas Degrassi, has 100 points. Well, actually, I think now that he's won the, the Formula E series, he's got more than that, but hey... So, 
If you enjoyed this video, and I hope you really did, please like, subscribe, comment, and I will leave you with this.